everybody. Hi there. Welcome back to Planet and God. We are continuing our gospel reading challenge. This is our chapter summary for... Chapter 11. 11. <laughs> chapter 11. So, uh, let's dive right in. So, the first part um, was talking about John the Baptist. Yep. What I thought was really interesting here was that John the Baptist was in prison. Yes. So, do you know where he was in prison or no? Somewhere in Galilee. Because, like... It would have been Herod Antipas. Well, I was thinking, like, how far that Jesus, the word of Jesus has spread oh, yeah. is what my brain was thinking. I just find that that's really interesting that it spread all the way to prison, which <laughs> is where... Right? Or, I mean, I don't know. I'm just speculating, maybe, but... I just find that really cool that it yeah. spread already that far. Um, well, John had had an awareness of Jesus previously. John had baptized well, Jesus. Well, right. But, so now it's just getting more and more fame. You know, right. Jesus is getting more and more famous. And so now they're he's just essentially asking to make sure, is this the one to come? And then Jesus responding with all of the prophecy that's being fulfilled in verse 5. Uh, Jesus is essentially referencing a multitude of verses from Isaiah. And all of the prophecy that Isaiah spoke about that would happen when the Messiah came. Yeah, again, pulling from the Old Testament right. into the New and like seeing fulfillment of certain prophecies yep. and things like that. And then you have Jesus in verses 7 through 10 taking the time to talk about John and who John is, what John could have been. Right. Essentially, if they had accepted Jesus as the Messiah. You see that uh, verses 9 and 10, that John is more than a prophet. This is of whom it was written. And then he goes into Elijah's prophecy which comes from both Isaiah 40 and Malachi 3. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. John is preparing the way for the messianic kingdom. If they had accepted that, John would have fulfilled those prophecies. Right, which is so important for them back then, but I think it's also so important for us, um, yep. you know, for future prophecy is being fulfilled within the tribulation, right. the seven-year tribulation right. also. Yeah, so not only is John a prophet, <laughs> he's more than a prophet because he is the herald to the Messianic king. Right. Or he could have been the herald to the Messianic king. Obviously he wasn't because he was rejected, and so Elijah's prof prophecy remains unfulfilled to this day. Right. And then we see in verses 11 through 15 how Jesus calls John the least in the kingdom. Um, the reason that he does that is because John will not live to see the completed works of the Messiah. John will meet, unfortunately, meet his demise before he sees Jesus die on the cross. Yeah, and just for a minute, I really hate the way he dies. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is pretty awful. We'll get to that in a couple more chapters, but it is an awful way to go. I thought this was interesting, the, the reference to how the, the, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Jesus is referring to the religious leaders of that day being the forceful men that are trying to bring about their version of the kingdom through their oral traditions. I find it interesting too that like they had a version of the kingdom that they were trying to bring in and I think even nowadays that's still occurring. It is, yeah, because <laughs> they're, they're still looking for Messiah to come and what they're looking for is... But it's is, their version. It's right. not the correct... Yeah, their know. version is, is a Messiah who will authenticate their oral traditions. Right. Not one that's going to authenticate the Mosaic law. Right. Which is what Jesus came and did. Yeah, so. And then, again, Elijah, Jesus, John being Elijah who is to come, uh, making reference that if they had accepted John, he would have fulfilled Elijah's prophecy. And then I broke down verses 16 through 19 as a another section 
um, referring to how John and Jesus did not come as the Jews expected. They came how God prophesied for them to come, but that wasn't what the Jews were looking for in a Messiah and a herald. They were looking for, again, someone to, to authenticate their version. Um, so when 16, when it says, but to what shall I like in this generation, it's talking about that specific generation that rejected the Messiah. Yes. Correct? Yes. That, because what did they expect? They expected the Messiah to come and authenticate their oral laws. Right. Not not to come and challenge them. They that, were setting up these all these oral traditions and they wanted Messiah to come and say, You did good. Those oral good job. Right. So the, those oral laws are good and you did great. You and patted my head. I did. But that's what they were looking for was someone to pander them. Right. And they so didn't get that. What I'm asking, I guess, with the generation thing, is that generation doesn't does that go into our time? Right, from that generation on until oh. the seven-year tribulation, or is it just that generation no, until they pass away? He's then? specifically talking to, the, talking to that generation, because that generation saw Jesus. saw Jesus, which <laughs> goes into the next section, 20 through 24, and the woes on the cities. Right, Those cities have the Messiah. He is physically present, Yeah, and they are rejecting him. That's the whole point of this this section with the with John and with twenty through twenty four. The fact that you have Messiah physically present and you're still going to reject him. Right. That's what the yeah, the big issue is for that generation. Again, Jesus reiterating the point: if Sodom had Jesus, it would have repented. So that's just just goes to show you how the hearts of Sodom were if they actually had the physical Messiah they would have turned away yeah I think um, that generation had like their hearts were very hardened yes Um, you have anything else Uh, and then just to wrap it up verses 25 through 30 um, after criticizing the Jews for not accepting John and Jesus He then goes into prayer. Jesus opens in prayer. He asks the Father for his believers. He thanks them for the believers, calling them the little children again. Again, term of endearment for the disciples. Jesus then does like a, in his prayer, he does a compare and contrast with the Pharisaic teaching, the yoke and the burden and his own teaching with how his burden is light, his yoke is easy. Because, I mean, really, the Mosaic law compared to the oral traditions is easy. Well, right. There's a, it's about faith and belief, right. and not about you have Work to do X, Y, and Z. Work conformity and yeah. right doing X, Y, and Z. I like this quote from Andrew Murray in his book *Abide in Christ*. He says about this section: first, he calls us to come to him in which we heard and listened to the call at the moment of our salvation. We come to him for truth and salvation. We come to him because we saw his promises were fulfilled. And when we came to him, we received the blessings and the joy of his love. His welcome is hearty. His pardon is full and free. His love is so sweet and precious. We come to him because he called us. And we show our need for forgiveness. We were heavy laden and our labor was never ending. But coming to him, we are free from the bondage of works. Right, The yoke of the Pharisees being burdensome, the oral law, works-based type salvation. Jesus' yoke being that of salvation through faith. Yeah. And not burdensome. Very cool. It is. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, that's it for chapter 11. We will catch you tomorrow for Matthew chapter 12. Bye.